Hello, we're here at Gregonog Hall in Mid Wales for the Research Teaching Practice in Wales conference. Uh, this is September uh, 2011. Um, we've had a two day conference here and it's, it's, we're coming to the end of it now, but I thought I'd just ask some colleagues uh, uh, for their reflections on the conference and to perhaps to, to pick out some, some highlights. Now, uh, I have with me here Dr. Helen Walk Walkington from Oxford Brookson University, who has actually kicked off the conference with a keynote yesterday. Uh, so I'm going to turn to Helen and, and ask her for uh, perhaps comments about the conference. Well, it's been a fantastic conference, and I think one of the best things has been the opportunity to talk to colleagues from across Wales, lots of different institutions represented, and also lots of different disciplines, and it's been fabulous to talk to people and look at their practice in multiple dis disciplines, um, different types of practice, but all with a huge commitment to developing undergraduate research. And the thing that I've been delighted to see is examples of students taking control of disseminating their research as well. So it's been a really great opportunity. One of the themes of the conference was uh, student research within the curriculum. And, of course, what, what's, what's great is that we can actually talk to students and, and invite students to come along and, and uh, tell us what they're up to in terms of research. And we're lucky to have with me uh, Selina and Sarah from University of Wales Trinity St. David, who actually presented at the conference. Yeah, um, we're two members, the only two student members of the first ever edition of the Undergraduate Research Journal for our university. And we were here to present um, kind of our journey and our feelings and our experiences as um, you know, student members of the editorial board and what we feel about it. And um, I think Sarah's going to give her first opinion about her highlight of the conference thus far. Yeah, uh, well we're very pleased to say that um, the student researcher was very well received which is brilliant, and um, I think a highlight for both of us was uh, just getting to meet a range of different people and getting to hear um, their experiences with research and what they found out and some of their students' opinions, which has been great. How do you think the journal was received by the delegates here? Um, well, I think they were, they were very interested and intrigued because obviously the whole conference is about linking teaching and research and getting the students' perspective on it. And being the only two students, undergraduate students here, it was really, you know, they were really interested to see, well, you know, it's, what, it's, it's the theory being applied. And uh, yeah, I think they were really pleased to, to see that people are doing undergraduate research journals and that undergraduates are getting their voice heard. So you've launched the journal now and uh, you've had the first issue printed and it looks absolutely fantastic. I, I just want to congratulate you Thank on what you. you've done. Uh, what, are the, what are the plans then for the future for the journal? Um, well, I think uh, me and Selena are both going to take on some more responsibility um, this coming academic year to launch our second volume. Um, and yeah, I just I think we both want to build on any imperfections that we had this year and pass our knowledge on to the next bunch of students, which will hopefully be some more, and they'll then be in charge of the editorial board. So yeah, just to see it progress further and further, really. Fantastic. Well, well done, and thank you very much for coming along for the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the conference had two themes. Um, one was uh, the student research in the curriculum, but of course the other uh, important aspect of research teaching links is the research that academics undertake to help inform their teaching in the curriculum and so on. I'm fortunate to be with two speakers from the conference here who both gave uh, uh, presentations in that, in that area. And I just want to uh, ask them about what they talked about and perhaps some reflections on, on the other talks uh, about research informed teaching within the conference. I'm going to start with, with uh, Kate from uh, Kate Thomas from the University of Wales, uh, no, sorry, University of West of England. Um, you're a non-Welsh academic. But uh, you've braved, you've braved the, 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 the Welsh countryside and you've come to, to speak to us today. What did you talk, talk, talk to us about this morning, Kate? Um, my presentation was about uh, the research I've done into the transition from foundation degree to honours year. Um, and that's been tracking students' experience over a, a full academic year through, through that transition. And the aim of the research is, is actually to use the findings to enhance transition support within, within the university. All oh, right. So... In terms of um, transitions, we had a, a bit of a discussion about transitions afterwards mm. um, and, and how students come from, uh, have a transition from school to university and so on. Um, so how does, it, how does it sort of sit within all the different transitions that students have to experience? Well, obviously this is just one of many transitions and actually the whole subject of transition is, is, is very interesting. There's lots of different perspectives um, you can bring to bear on it. Um, the one that I'm most interested in is about the um, way um, a ident identities kind of transfer and um, 
the, way, the attitudes towards foundation degree students can be perhaps negative or, in, in students' views, sometimes a bit snobbish, so that while they may be quite successful as foundation degree students within an FE college and, and become as graduates, foundation degree graduates, once they come into an honours year, it's almost as if they are a first year again, but they're in a third year, and um, they have to run very hard, very, very fast to, to keep up. So to what sort of recommendations would you make to academics um, and to, to improve the transition for those types of students? Um, the big one is, is awareness, really. I think often um, you know, academics have a huge amount to do, and, and they may not be very aware that... Um, you know, they, they may be used to having direct entry students but not really think about where, where they're coming from or, or what that might be like for them. Um, so awareness is a big thing, um, information and also engagement with those students prior to the actual moment of transition into the, into the university. Um, but I mean, individual academics can't necessarily do that on their own. It need, there needs to be a kind of um, a structure and a mechanism within the institutions really. Mm. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm going to turn to Molly Owens now from the University of Wales, Newport, who gave us a, a quite an exciting talk about, well, a talk about very exciting professional practice and research that you've been undertaking. I um, secured some funding when I, just a bit of background, I left um, industry, I worked in advertising and communications industry for industries for 20 years, and I left about two and a half, nearly three years ago to teach full time. I've taught one or two modules a semester for about 15 years. So this is my first full-time academic job. I knew that one of the dangers was um, in my industry and anything with mass media, um, things change so quickly. And in the last two to three years, as soon as I left the industry, social media took off, um, iPhone apps and iPad apps. It, it was just kind of starting to take off when I left the industry. So the danger was that I was going to lose touch. And I think that's what happens. Um, it's, it's difficult if you're a full-time academic to um, keep your finger on the pulse. So I got some, I secured some funding. Um, it's a discontinued um, program, unfortunately. But secured some funding, um, went on two placements. One was a new technology company, a new media company. And then I, I talked about the different placements. I talked about the, one was in California. Um, the other two I combined to, um, to go to agencies in Wales. Some of the expected benefits um, from a research perspective, um, I did expect that I would have research outputs and papers from this experience. Um, I expected that I would have better lecture material and that um, they would be current. The lectures would be updated. By the time textbooks come out, really they're out of date almost. Um, so these were the things I did expect, that students would enjoy hearing about these. The unexpected benefits were student placements. Um, I, I formed, on behalf of the university, I was basically an ambassador. Uh, I, I built the name of the program, a lot of people in the area didn't know that we had an advertising program, um, so I got the, got the name, um, built upon the name of the program, built upon the name of the university, um, with the people that are actually changing the face of media and advertising. Um, another benefit that I was, I was hopeful would come from it was live projects, um, and that had a lot of research uh, involved with it, student-led research, and then um, research from my perspective as well. Um, and it's really interesting, one of, the, uh, one of the most interesting unexpected results was the students' um, attitudes when you changed, all of a sudden that was cool. And I, um, I, I think that they get so familiar with you and they think, oh, she did that two years ago, she doesn't know what she's talking about. All of a sudden, I was an expert again and they were um, more motivated to speak to me, especially the male students, I thought it was very interesting. Um, there's a different dynamic, I'm the only female lecturer um, in the department and the boys were more likely to gravitate toward the male lecturers. So there were a lot of unexpected uh, results, some expected results. It was overwhelmingly successful. The challenge is to c continue building on this and trying to make sure that I don't lose touch with the industry and somehow I'm able to spend two or three weeks um, a year out somewhere mm. in the field keeping abreast of change. Fantastic. And that's really important, I think, for academics to, to keep a toehold in, in where they've come from, Absolutely. really, in terms of particularly in the professional uh, disciplines. Um, thank you very much for that. But just generally about, about the conference, uh, any highlights you'd like to, to share? You go first. Um, I've just been here today, but um, it's certainly it, it's a very friendly it's a very friendly group. It's a very it feels very inclusive. Um, so it's, yeah, even though I've only been here a short time, it's been 
Well, that's good to hear. Um, I would say the same thing. I've been at last December. I went to a really big conference, and this has a, a much more. Um, it's smaller, so you get to speak to everyone, and it is quite a friendly environment. I didn't feel nervous going up in front of everyone. Everyone gave um, very good feedback, comments, and suggestions um, to where to take the research and look for funding. It was really, I think the highlight would be just getting to know other academics and having the, the time and space to investigate these things. Great, well, thank you very much, and uh, I'm glad you've enjoyed the conference and safe journeys home. Thank you. Thank you.